We request all the guests and the graduates to be seated. The procession is about to start. Please be seated. Volunteers, uh, please move inside. The procession will start. Okay. We request the students from the music club to come near the stage. I once again request everyone to please ensure that your mobile phones are either on silent mode or switched off.
I request everyone to kindly raise. Registrar, Professor Dr. S. M. Balakrishnan, leads the procession with the academic scepter, Sengol. I kindly request everyone to raise for the Tamar Thai Vartha. our Honorable Vice-Chancellor, Professor Dr. V. Nagaraj, to deliver the welcome address and to present the annual report. Good afternoon to everybody, sir, and madam, the Chief Guest of the Day, Honorable Justice M. M. Sundaresh, 
जेड सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑफ इंडिया द चांसलर ऑफ तमिलनाडु नेशनल लॉ यूनिवर्सिटी एंड द ऑनरेबल चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ मद्रास हाई कोर्ट ऑनरेबल जस्टिस संजय वी गंगापुर वाला मेंबर्स ऑफ द यूनिवर्सिटी गवर्निंग बॉडीज ग्रेजुएट्स डिग्नेटरीज प्रेजेंट माय कोलीग्स माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन द फिफ्थ एनुअल कॉन्वोकेशन ऑफ तमिलनाडु नेशनल लॉ यूनिवर्सिटी इज कन्वीन टू कन्फर डिग्रीज ऑन द ग्रेजुएट्स Five years of hard work by the graduates and the institution has yielded the desired results, and the graduates are taking their degrees today from the Honorable Chief Justice of Madras High Court and the Chancellor of the University. I deem it my privilege to welcome Honorable Just Honorable Justice M M Sundaresh, Judge Supreme Court of India, who has graciously accepted our invitation to be the. chief guest of the fifth convocation of tamil nadu national law university honorable justice sundaresh is very busy in fact today morning he has attended a function at coimbatore and traveled all the way from coimbatore to be with us this evening respected sir i welcome your lordship on behalf of the governing bodies the university myself and all of us assembled here honorable justice Sanjay V. Gangapurwala is the Chief Justice of Madras High Court and also the Chancellor of Tamil Nadu National Law University. As the Chancellor of Tamil Nadu National Law University, he has shown keen interest in ensuring that everything is in order in the university. He would be awarding the degrees to the graduates. I wholeheartedly welcome your lordship to this function, sir. Honorable Thiru, yes, Raghupati, Minister of Law. courts prevention of corruption of tamil nadu has kindly consent to grace the occasion the honorable minister is busy with the canvassing in for his election lok sabha elections in the state in spite of his uh, busy schedule his love and affection to this university has made him take some time off from his uh, busy schedule of canvassing and uh, may has made it to the function which is a momentous occasion and he would be blessing the graduates sir so welcome sir i also welcome the honorable members of the general council executive council academic council finance committee for having made it to the convocation in spite of their uh, commitments here i would like to make a special mention of honorable dr justice anita sumant for her, her, her help at various stages of preparation and whenever i was in difficulty i used to trouble her uh, telephoning also we recognize the gracious presence of the honorable justice mahadevan or mahadevan the senior most judge in the high court of madras i sincerely welcome you sir we also recognize the presence of honorable judges of the high court of madras madurai bench honorable justice adikeshwalu Uh, honorable justice uh, jagadish chandra justice arul murugan justice suresh kumar uh, sir sincerely we welcome you to this uh, great function i deem it as my pleasure and privilege to welcome the graduates and their parents who have strived for last 5 years to achieve the task of their taking their degrees <coughs> the graduates are moving out of the university to the universe i sincerely hope that the university has inculcated in them the necessary acumen to face the realities of life i also welcome my colleagues both teaching and non teaching staff to the function as also the students studying at the university uh, to be part of this uh, celebration i welcome all the dignitaries honorable dignitaries uh, who have responded to our invitation and made it to this uh, function uh, please excuse me because of the time constraint i will not be in a position to mention all the names of the uh, dignitaries but i respect that uh, they are coming to the uh, this momentous function i recognize the presence of thiru uh, parandaman mla collector superintendent of police uh, the engineer in chief the satyamurthy the founder vice chancellor of this university professor n muruguvelu i am glad sir all of you have made it to this uh, function i have the pleasure in 
welcoming all the officers on duty, uh, officers from the High Court, uh, officers from the Police Department and the other departments for having uh, been with us since morning to help us uh, make this function a successful one. Last but not the least, I take the opportunity to welcome all the invitees who have taken their time off to make this function a happy occasion and a memorable one. So it is um, sort of a ceremonial thing that um, in the convocation, the annual report is presented. This is the annual report for 22-23. Uh, the, the tradition requires presenting the annual report at the beginning of the convocation. I will attempt to do it in a very uh, brief way. In the year 22-23, still there were some after effects of corona, hence the university couldn't organize many activities. The university has two undergraduate programs, BA LLB honors and BCom LLB honors. We have an LLM program with the two, three streams, corporate and social sec securities laws, intellectual property laws, natural resources laws. And we have PhD uh, students, uh, eight scholars are pursuing their PhD as on late. Coming to the students' achievements, they have done their internship in various uh, law firms, judges chambers, lawyers offices, Honorable Justice Sir R. Mahadevan, Judge Madras High Court Office is one, Mr. Uh, Ma Karthik Mahalingam, Senior Advocate is another, Peace Law Foundation, Ayer and Thomas, Chennai, Advocate Prabhu Shankar, uh, Arun Kumar Raj and Associates, Ramani and Shankar, Advocate uh, Vaiteshwaran, Advocate Rohan Kothari, uh, the settlement table, Rajendran Law Office, Lakshmi Kumaran and Sridharan, and Samavad, Center for Criminology and Criminal Justice, Rajiv Gandhi National Law University. These are just to mention a few of the officers where they have done their uh, internship in the course of their studies uh, at the Tamil Nadu National Law School of India University. When it comes to recruitment, uh, about uh, not about exactly 20 students have, 20 graduates have got their jobs in various law firms. Just to name them, Trilegal, it is one of the top layer uh, law firm, which offers uh, attractive salary and good work also. M2K Advisors, TGLS Consulting Group, Lakshmi Kumaran Sridharan, Varahe Analytics, and uh, many more. The other graduates, they are pursuing practice or uh, pursuing higher studies in India or abroad. The students have published research papers, presented papers in various national and international conferences. The total number of articles published and papers presented by the students come to about 25. The team of students, a team of students consisting of Subham Kumar Das, Anish Mishra, and uh, Ritami from the batch of 2026, that is they will be graduating two years uh, later were declared as runners-up in the 40th All India Moot Court competition organized by Government Law College Pondicherry. Subham also won the Best Speaker Award. Faculty members also have made significant achievements in various fields like organizing training programs, publication of articles, being resource persons in seminars and conferences. The following are the faculty members who have accomplished one or more of the above-mentioned activities. Dr. S. Amrita Lingam, Professor of Law, uh, Dr. S. Subarao, Assistant Professor, Ms. Uh, Golda Sahu, Assistant Professor, Mahindra Prabhu, Mr. P Ms. P Preetha, Preetam Balakrishnan, Mr. Mahmud Azad, Mr. Nirmal Singh Hira, Ms. Rajeshwari P., Ms. E. Malini, Ms. P. Vasistan. The details of their achievements, <coughs> accomplishments, uh, and all the other details are uh, in the annual report uh, uh, that is, of course, printed, not circulated today. The university has organized one-week faculty development program on teaching and learning of, learning of conservation of resources and institutional responsibility in the context of sustainable development goals and interdisciplinary approach, a one-day national workshop on implementation of SDG and targets for higher educational institutions, transformation in India, one-day workshop on the prospectus and challenges in implementing national education policy 2020 
in legal education institutions. In addition to this, the university has organized national conferences on the gen national conference on the January on the journey of 75 years of legal education in India, experiments and experiences of National Law School of India University model and the way forward. Further, the university has organized 22 lectures and webinars. And I once again welcome all of you to this uh, momentous function. Thank you, sir. I now request our Honorable Vice Chancellor to felicitate our Chief Guest, Honorable Trijustice M.M. Sundaresh, Judge, Supreme Court of India. I request our Vice Chancellor to felicitate our Chancellor, Honorable Tere Justice Sanjay Vijay Kumar Ganga Purwala, Chief Justice of the Madras High Court. I now request our Vice Chancellor to felicitate our Pro Chancellor, Honorable Tira S. Raghupati, Minister of Law, Courts, Prisons, and Prevention of Corruption, Government of Tamil Nadu. I now invite our Vice Chancellor to request our Honorable Chancellor to declare the convocation open. Respected Chancellor, sir, I have the honor to request you to declare the convocation open. This is the fifth convocation of the Tamil Nadu National Law University has been called to confer degrees upon the candidates who in the examinations held for the purpose have been certified to be worthy of the same. I now declare the convocation open. I now invite our Chancellor to request the Chief Guest, Honorable Tir Justice M.M. Sundresh, to deliver the convocation address. Honorable Chief Justice, Sri Ganga Purwala, Honorable Minister for Law, the Pro Chancellor, Sister Dr. Anita Sumant, Brother Mahadevan, Justice Mahadevan, Brother Suresh Kumar, Brother Jagajit Chandra, Brother Adi Gesvalu, Brother Arun Murugan, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Registrar, members of the District Judiciary, including the Principal District Judge Trichy, members of the faculty, staff, parents of the students being conferred the degree of law. And then, the last but not the least, my dear students, a very good evening to all of you.
Shakespeare in Henry VI said, let's kill all the lawyers. The statement implies the importance of lawyers in a society. Believing in the democratic principles. My congratulations to all of you. You are entering into a very exciting phase of your life. I would start my speech by saying that I do not wish to read my prepared speech. Advocacy is not a mere profession, it's a calling. Who are you today? You are social engineers, doctors, auditors dealing with the malaise of the society. You are not ordinary persons. Please always keep this in mind. You do not prepare like any other student does or any other professional do, will do. do. You address and deal with the problems of the society. How do you do that? Understand the facts. Marshal them. What do you mean by understanding the facts? Facts as understood by common man is different. Or, or rather they are different from what you have been taught as per section 3 of the Indian Evidence Tank. You have been tuned to think differently because you are persons who are supposed to bring the requisite change in the society. Law is your tool. Facts might look similar or on the face of it as correct, but they are not facts. Facts are different from truth. Truth lies in between. This is your job to find it out. Your tool is your knowledge in law. Its application on the facts as presented by you. You need to understand the power of words. Let me give you an example. A physically challenged person was seeking help sitting on the corner of a busy street with the placard. I am physically, I am sorry, not physically challenged, it's physically challenged, but I am blind. Please help me. Nobody helped him. A law student saw this. He changed the sentence. The response was spontaneous help from the bystanders. What did he do? He wrote, today is a beautiful day. 
I can hear the chipping of the birds, the blossoming of the flowers. I'm sure all of you are enjoying the morning, but unfortunately, I cannot. This is the power of the words. Now, how you understand the facts and present before the court determines your success. It's a daunting task. Why? Because you have to convince someone about your point of view. It's always difficult to convince somebody. All of us, uh, we have our own views and opinion. Now that's where the role of a lawyer comes in. You need to convince a judge by presenting the facts in, in such a manner and then by making him to think that what this young man or young lady says this may be correct. It may be a case of a homicide. You would know what I mean. But it lies within you to create a doubt in the mind of the judge. Number one, he did not do it. If he has done it, it lacks the necessary mens rea. It's not a murder. Perhaps it may be a culpable homicide. A managing director of a company was curious as to how a particular salesman was able to maximize the sale. He, uh, he called him and asked him, how did you do this? He said, sir, I always carry 50 caps with me. After due interaction, I will find out what is the topic of attraction for an individual. Then I will go into the topic and then I will floor him by making him to wear that cap. So though the managing director was happy, he was also angry and it, yeah, yeah, he told him, so you have a cap for everybody which means you have a cap for me also. Then he said, no, no, sir. I have only 50 caps. The 50 caps are meant for others, not for you. The managing director was very happy. All right, you can go. I'm increasing your salary from next month onwards. The salesman went happily thinking to, uh, to himself, Today I have sold one cap. This is what you should do. Your ability to think differently. A child was having an apple. After eating a part of it, He took the next apple, there were two, and asked her mother, Mommy, do you want this? Mother said, yes, but she was very happy. The child did a strange thing. She took the apple, next second apple also, had a bite, and after some time gave the apple to the mother. 
The mother was very upset. I did so much for her, but why did she, she do this? When the father came, the mother made a complaint. I have done everything as a mother to her, but looks like she doesn't love me as she loves you. The father said, you are not right. You have not understood her. Prove me wrong, she said. Father, once again, the next day took two apples and gave it to the child. The child took the first apple and had a bite. Then father asked her, why don't you give an apple to me? Then she took the second apple, again had a bite, and gave the first apple to him. Father asked her, why did you do, do? Look at this beautiful answer from the child. The child said, Papa, I love you very much. I had a taste of both the apples and, and I gave you the, the tasteful one. The better one I did not give you. Before that, I wanted to check it. Now, from a common man perspective, facts are the same. Now, how do you look at it? That is where the role of an advocate lies. And that is where the justice lies. A young, a young lawyer was arguing a case. It was a case of uh, Patent Offense Punishment Restriction 279. By overspeed, charges that uh, he committed an accident by his overspeed and therefore committed negligence. He asked a question to his client. Are you married? He said, yes. Where were you traveling? I was traveling to my, to my mother-in-law's house. What for? To pick up my wife. Then thereafter he said, no mercy of examination. The judge was aghast. Is it all? Yes. Are you sure you don't want to? He said, yes. Why? He said, Your Honor, the first, the, then uh, the prosecution also did not cross-examine him on this point because these are all admitted facts. Then his argument is that, Your Honor, there is no dispute that he is married. What for? Yes, that's right. The lawyer knows that the judge is a henpecked husband. I am again telling your honor he is a married man. Then he said, oh, I know he is a married man. Your honor, you know the difficulties of a marriage. He said, yes. It's marriage. is a union where a, a strong lion is being killed by a beautiful deer. Because is this, that is his experience. Then in, he said, Your Honor, he was going to his mother-in-law's house, correct? But the question is whether as to whether you committed an act of negligence or not. Your Honor, the third fact is that he is going to the place to pick, his wife, pick up his wife. That's right. Then how could 
he be driving the vehicle very, very fast and negligent manner. After all, evidence under Section 3 of the Indian Evidence Act has to be seen on the degree of probability. The judge says, you are right. Your discharge case is dismissed. As a lawyer, you have a very strong responsibility. That responsibility is to your client, to your opponent, and to the court. Every case is a journey towards the truth. Your advocacy plays a pivotal role in deciphering the truth. You have an ability to think and think differently would make the court to come to a correct decision. You have to understand the case, marshal the facts. A sterling quality that is required of a lawyer is to understand his case thoroughly and apply the law correctly. When you read the case, you will find there are 10 points available. When you read it for the second time, you'll find only seven. Third time will be five. Fourth time, you'll have only two or three. You should develop the, this ability to catch the jugular vein of the case, which you will. You don't need to be extremely intelligent. You just have the ability to think differently. A, a, a very young lawyer wanted to marry a beautiful lady. She agreed to the proposal, but, but, but hesitant about his profession, which, which at some point of time, most of you might face. So this, this lawyer went to his friend, a classmate, and told her, you are a lady, you are the best person, best friend for me, please go and convince this girl. So this smart young lady lawyer, she went to her and then, why are you not marrying him? She said, I am a bit hesitant because he is a lawyer. What, what if he is a lawyer? He is the best possible bridegroom for you. She said, he asked, how? Let me tell you, a lawyer, a lawyer is a thorough gentleman because whenever he enters the portals of a courtroom, he bows down because then he knows how to respect somebody. He wears a gown, therefore he understands a woman better. He accepts a decision of the judge without protest. Therefore, he learns, he knows how to appreciate the other's view. And beyond all this, every day, from morning to evening, he is at the bar but doesn't drink. This is the ability To think. When you think, it will give a different result and that result will be a correct result. I also set another attack doors in one of my speeches. A professor was asking a girl student of law. It's an interesting question. It was, why did Goddess Parvati agree to marry Lord Shiva? She said, uh, there is no one else she could marry. 
Correct answer. Then he asked the other girl. She said that that will make everybody happy from her family. That's the best proposal. Then he asked someone. One girl stood up and gave multiple answers. She said, there are various reasons. All the answers given my friends are correct, but there are multiple reasons. What are they? He could be the best bachelor available on Earth or in the entire universe. So, she cannot get any, anybody better than him. She can tell all her friends that they cannot get a better bridegroom than her. Their parents can, mother can, parents can tell others, we, get, we have the best catch. On a personal friend, when she starts her life, she will not have any water problem because Ganges is in his head. There is no electricity problem because moon is also on his head. There is no need, there is no problem with dressing because he wears mostly the same dress. There is no difficulty with food because most of the time he takes raw flesh. Then besides all this reason, I have one more reason, he said, yes, what is it? Unlike all my friends who will have the, the problem which cannot be avoided, which I also might face, Goddess Favadi will, will be blessed with one factor, which is she will never, never have a mother-in-law. This is, this is his ability to think. I am saying this anecdote so that you know you should be able to understand that you should develop this creativity. A professor of law was fine, once, once found that in one of the corners of the room, a student was constantly creating noise. Irritated, he asked the student to stand up. He wanted to expose the student. He asked a question to him. If you answer this question, you can be in the room, otherwise you have to get out of the school, this class. He's a very smart boy. Though not very attentive and studious. So he said, All right, sir, I'll try to answer what is the question. The professor asked him, What's the difference between logic and legal? And what is neither logic nor legal? This boy is a very notorious boy. Sir, you are married? He said, yes. Sir, you are married recently? He said, yes. Sir, what is your age? I am 45. What is the age of your wife? She is 25. Sir, your marriage is legal but not logic. The professor was irritated. He said, all right. What is not legal. Sir, what is not legal but logic? Sir, if I give the answer, you should not be angry with me. He said, oh, no, I will not be angry with you. The others are witnesses, sir. He said, all right, no problem. Sir, because your wife is an young lady, you are 45 year old, She is in relationship with one of my friends. First, the professor became red-faced. What are you saying? 
सर दिस इज नॉट लीगल बट लॉजिक the angry professor asked him all right now you tell me what is neither legal nor logic sir all of us know you know that friend of ours is a good for nothing student he doesn't believe in studying anything but you are you have given him the highest mark in your class this is neither legal nor logic professor professor could not say anything my dear students you have a tough road ahead but hard work always pays do not get disheartened do not believe others that you do not have a legal background you do not have mastery over language do not get disheartened do not let your confidence go language is only a medium and i am one of the example standing before you i studied in tamil medium till ssslc today i stand before you as a judge of the supreme court so you can tomorrow become like me and perhaps become the chief justice of india it's a hard work that pays there is always sufficient space at the top when we enter this profession it was governed by mediocrity today i could see talent emerging at your level the law of field is changing there was no difference between the time of my seniors and my time but take it from me the law as as a subject is changing and changing very fast you have commercial litigations coming one after the other you have new fields of litigation traditional mind conventional lawyers might struggle in this new fields there are a lot of opportunities for you to grab i have to say something for young lady lawyers coming years or yours mark my word be as judges or as lawyers you are going to rule this institution all the changes would certainly in you to benefit the change is already happening you have a very fine lady judge sitting before you lot of young lawyer young lady lawyers are going to become judges in or in most of the recent selections women lawyers exceed men lawyers in the appointment of judges changes would come at the high court level and at the level supreme court so to pro so despite your difficulties do not give up do not allow your dreams to go astray stay hungry even as even at times you are foolish future is yours all the very best thank you very much I humbly request our honorable chancellor to take over the proceedings of the convocation
the candidates now be presented all the candidates uh, please we stand forward honorable chancellor sir i present to you these candidates for the llm ba llb honors and bcom llb honors degrees who have been certified after examination to be duly qualified to receive the degrees and to be awarded the prizes and medals do you sincerely promise and declare that if admitted to the degrees for which you are candidates and for which you have been recommended you will in your daily life and conversation conduct yourselves as worthy members of this university by virtue of the authority vested in me as a chancellor of the tamil nadu national law university tiruchirappalli i admit you as well as those taking degree in absentia to the respective degrees for which you have been examined and found qualified to receive the degrees i request the graduates to please be seated i now invite our registrar to present the candidates for the conferment of degrees honorable chancellor i present unto you the candidates taking degree in person as well as in absentia for the llm degree program who have been certified after examination to be duly qualified to receive the degree so may I now present the llm candidates mr abhishek sriram Ms. Chandana. Ms. Yadil Kavya. Ms. Nartana Bhuvana. Ms. Pratishta, Ms. Arvind, Ms. Benny Joseph. Ms. Chansi Rani. Ms. Tanisha Yadav. Ms. Roshini. Ms. Tayal Nayagi. so list of graduates in absentia ms kirti bhakar honorable chancellor i present unto you the candidates taking degree in person as well as in absentia for the ba llb honors degree program who have been certified after examination to be duly qualified to receive the degree ms aditi mehta Ms. Aditi Rana, Mr. Anvin Thomas, Mr. A. S. Arvind, Mr. Arvind Sundar. Mr. Ashwath Aditya, Mr. 
மிஸ் தேவதர்ஷினி மிஸ்டர் கோகுல் அபிமன்யூ மிஸ் ஜானகி தேவி மிஸ் ஜெயவர்ஷினி மிஸ் ஜெய கிருஷ்ணா மிஸ் மதுமிதா மிஸ்டர் ஆர் மணிமாறன் மிஸ் மின்னாலி தவே மிஸ்டர் நாராயணா மிஸ் நீலா சவுந்தரவல்லி மிஸ்டர் நெவின் மிஸ் நித்யா சௌமியா மிஸ்டர் நிவேத் மிஸ்டர் பொழிலன் மிஸ் பிரதீபா பாட்டி மிஸ்டர் ரித்திக் சுசீல் மிஸ்டர் சாக்னிக் சர்க்கார் மிஸ் சச்சி ஸ்ரீவாத்சவா மிஸ் சாம்பவி சர்மா மிஸ் சில்வனா கேத்தி மிஸ்டர் சிமரன்தீப் சிங் மிஸ்டர் சிவசூரியன் மிஸ் சௌமியா மிஸ் சௌமியா ஸ்ரீனிவாசன் மிஸ் ஸ்ரீயா மகாதேவன் மிஸ் துஷிதா முரளி மிஸ் வைதேகி குப்தா மிஸ்டர் யாக்னேஷ் பட்டா மிஸ்டர் யோகீஷ் மிஸ்டர் பிரஜேஷ் குமார் மிஸ் தாரிகா மிஸ் சஞ்சனா மிஸ் அஜித் ராம் சார் லிஸ்ட் ஆஃப் கிராஜுவேட்ஸ் ரிசீவிங் த டிகிரி இன் அப்சன்ஷியா மிஸ் எஸ் சி ஆர் அஜிதா மிஸ் அனிதா மிஸ்டர் ஹர்ஷா மேக் விக்ரம் மிஸ் பானுப்ரியா மிஸ் சாரு சர்மா மிஸ் டோகா மிருணாலினி மிஸ் டாலி மீனா மிஸ் காயத்ரி தேவி மிஸ் கேரன் நிரோஷா தீபா தீபக் மிஸ்டர் நவீன் குமார் மிஸ்டர் யோகேஸ்வரன் மிஸ்டர் தேவ் அன்மோல் மிஸ்டர் அபிஷேக் டேஷ் ஆனரபிள் சான்சலர் ஐ ப்ரெசென்ட் அண்ட் டு யூ த கேண்டிடேட்ஸ் டேக்கிங் டிகிரி இன் பர்சன் ஆஸ் வெல் எஸ் இன் அப்சன்ஷியா ஃபார் த பிகாம் எல்எல்பி டிகிரி ஹானர்ஸ் டிகிரி ப்ரோக்ராம் who have been certified after examination to be duly qualified to receive the degree 
மிஸ்டர் கே ஆதிசங்கர் மிஸ் அபர்ணா சுந்தர்ராஜ் மிஸ் ஆனா மேரி மேத்யூ மிஸ்டர் ஆண்டோ ராபர்ட் மிஸ் அபர்ணா பத்மகவி மிஸ்டர் அர்ஷத் அஹமத் மிஸ் வி திவ்ய பாரதி மிஸ்டர் வி வி திவாகர் மிஸ் ஃபாத்திமா ஹுசைன் மிஸ் குணஸ்ரீ மிஸ்டர் ஹரி நாராயணன் ஹரி முருகானந்தம் ஹரிணி முருகானந்தம் சாரி மிஸ்டர் இளமாறன் மிஸ் இந்து வதனா மிஸ் ஜெய ரோஷினி மிஸ் ஜூலியா லிம்சே மிஸ் காவியா மிஸ் மணிமொழி மிஸ் மேகவர்தினி மிஸ் மதோஷினி மிஸ் நீனா சங்கரி மிஸ் ஏ எஸ் நேயா ஜி பிரேம் ராஜு மிஸ்டர் கே எம் பிருத்திவி மிஸ்டர் எஸ் ராகவன் மிஸ் எச் ராஜஸ்ரீ மிஸ் ஜே எம் ரக்ஷா மிஸ்டர் கும்மடி ராமசாய் மிஸ்டர் ரிச்சிஸ் ஜஸ்வந்த் மிஸ்டர் ஏ ரோஹன் ஆதித்யா மிஸ்டர் எம் கே சச்சின் ராகுல் மிஸ்டர் ஷிபி கந்தவேல் மிஸ் சிஸ்னா மிஸ் பி சுமீரன் மிஸ் பி சுமீரன் மிஸ் வி சுவிதா மிஸ் ஸ்வஸ்டிகா மிஸ்டர் தருண் ரோஷன் மிஸ் கே எஸ் தீர்த்தா மிஸ் எஸ் திஜா ஏ வாசுதேவ் மிஸ்டர் ஏ யோகானந்தம் 
Mr. Ravi Shankar M. Mr. S. T. Gunamani. Mr. Lenin. Mr. S. A. Charan. Let me read out the question in absentia. Mr. H. Abhinav Srinivasan, Ms. Anjali Karthamma, Ms. Induja, Ms. Kasturi, Ms. Mano Prashant, Mr. Vamsi Krishna, and Mr. Raghav Bervani. I now invite our Honorable Chief Guest for conferment of awards. Honorable Chancellor, I present unto you the candidates in person as well as in absentia who have been certified after examination to be duly qualified to be awarded the prizes and medals. First rank in LLM gold medal goes to Ms. Tanisha Yadav. BA LLB Honors Degree Program Gold Medalist. First rank goes to Ms. Pradeepa Bhati. <laughs> Second rank, Ms. J. Krishna. <laughs> Third rank, Mr. Sagnik Sarkar. Sagnik Sarkar. So now for BCom LAB Honors, gold rank, gold medal, first rank goes to Ms. Aparna Padmakavi. Second rank, Ms. A.S. Neya. Third rank, Ms. V. Suvita. Now on to overall women topper of 2023 batch, Ms. Aparna Padmakavi. Now we move on to the Endowment Awards. Professor K. Govindrajan Award for Topper in the Course Civil Procedure Code. So Topper in CPC in 2023 batch. Uh, the first rank goes to Ms. Pradipa Bhati. Again, Ms. V. Suvita. It is jointly shared by both the students here. Now on to the Karur YCI Bank medal for the batch topper in the course banking law in 2023. Again, it is shared by two students, Ms. J. Krishna and Ms. J. M. Raksha. <clears throat> So the next endowment, Senior Advocate C.K. Endo, CK Rajan Endowment Medal for the Batch Topper in the Course Constitutional Law in 2023. It again goes to Ms. Aparna Padmakavi. <laughs> mm. 
Now we have Professor N. Manohar Memorial Award for the Batch Topper in the course International Law. That's the Public International Law in 2023 Batch. Again, it is shared by two students, by Ms. Manimuri B. And Mr. Gummadi Ramasai. I request the graduates to kindly raise for the pledge. I humbly request our Honorable Chancellor to administer the pledge. Yes. We shall in thought, word and deed ever endeavor to be scrupulously honest in the discharge of our profession and shall uphold the dignity and integrity of our profession and the honor of our university. We shall uphold and advance social order and well-being of our fellow members and shall devote all our energy to the promote the unity, integrity and secular ideals of our constitution. Thank you. Please be seated. I now request our registrar, present the register of graduates to our Honorable Chancellor for his signature. I request our Honorable Chancellor to dissolve the convocation. I dissolve this convocation. I request everyone to kindly raise for the national anthem. everyone to kindly remain standing for the reverse procession.
I request everyone to join us for high tea. The graduates, please stay back for the group photo session, and also the office bearers of the Alumni Association will be addressing the graduates. I request the office bearers of the Alumni Association to come forward to address the graduates, please. Graduates, please be seated. I request all the graduates to please be seated. Graduates, I am Ashwin. On behalf of the Alumni Association, I address you. I am an EC member of the Tamil Nadu National Law University Alumni Association. And I request you to kindly wait for two minutes. I'll finish my address. And uh, the reason for me standing here before you is to formally inform you that we are there for you as an alumni association. We are in the process of registering the association, and it is underway. And, uh, before going further, did you know there is, uh, I heard that there is 100% campus placement in the university. No, I was just kidding. But this could be possible if we have a very strong and, alum, uh, very strong and vibrant alumni association is what I want to make a point here. And that is the reason we are standing before you. And uh, you may wonder what, what is the use of this alumni association? Why do we need at all? There are various objectives and scope for it. The memorandum of the association will be shared with you as soon as it is registered with you all to briefly give you a, a birth's view of what we are going to do is that the main objective is that to promote academic activities with the interaction of the alumni. You may have wondered, uh, you, you would want to explore beyond your classrooms. You may, you may would want lectures from practitioners. That could be possible only if the university and the students is in liaison with the alumni who will be placed at various other positions and you'd be uh, surprised and uh, you'd, you'd be pleasantly surprised to know that many of our alumni associate, uh, alumni are very uh, well placed in various uh, uh, organizations and uh, they would be able to help you out in that ex uh, extent. And one more thing, the financial aspect, I also heard there were crowdfunding helping the students of TNLU. And this could be possibly formalized and structured with the help of an alumni association. And I also heard in the recent uh, moot court events and other events, there were contributions from the alumni, which is a very commendable thing, because once you move out of this campus, you have some uh, uh, time to think about uh, uh, your university. So with this, I conclude my address. And uh, I also extend my warm and hearty congratulations to all of you graduates. Actually, according to me, you are all the guests now because you have graduated, no longer students. You join us as guests with us. So with that, I conclude and have a great evening. Thank you for this opportunity and uh, Jai Hind. Thank you, Ashwin. I request all the graduates to stay back for the group photo. Uh, our vice chancellor and registrar will be coming back to join you all for the group photo. I kindly request all of you to remain seated. <laughs> 